Hello and welcome to Falcon's Ledge. I'm Ostringer and you are watching another hardware review. Today we're looking at the venerable Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas. I've once again added some new tech for my reviews. I hope you all like the additions and naturally I will continue to improve my processes. I've had this Hotas for two years. I got it used, but it was basically in new condition. This was my first foray into the high-end joystick market and I've really enjoyed using this setup. So with that said, let's dive right in. The Warthog Flight Stick is a replica of the A-10 Warthog Flight Control System, as well as the F-16 Flight Stick. These grips are sold separately from Thrustmaster, but there is no discernible difference between the two. The grip itself is of all metal construction. The handle is made of aluminum and weighs 1,033 grams, or 2.2 pounds. That's as much as a female goshawk. Well, I guess that isn't a very good frame of reference for most of you, but it's pretty heavy. The body of the grip feels great. There's something about a metal grip that just feels extremely high quality. The components, switches, and all the buttons feel very high quality and of great design. Sorry about the dirty hands. I had just replaced an alternator in a diesel truck. Apparently, I missed a spot or two. The axes on this stick are smooth and linear. There's very little center feel, and the tension feels the same when moving in all directions of the axis due to the large single spring construction. The POV and the two hats on the face have very differentiated feels to each hat, and their actuation is linear and predictable. You could say that they have a bit of a squishy feel because they don't have a tactile click on activation, but there is no center clicks on the hats for these hats either. The button on the face of the stick has a very heavy feel to it. This thumb hat over here is my favorite hat on the whole stick. It has a nice center click to it as well. The pinky lever does not have a tactile click either, which would be nice considering that it's a button and not an axis, but it does have a good feel to it. The pinky button behind it has the same feel as the button on the face. The trigger is the gold standard that all triggers are compared to in the sim market today. The material feels of very high quality, the spring actuation is linear, and there is a distinct click activation for the first stage, and you can also feel where the second stage activates. And finally we have the index finger button on the side of the stick. All of the buttons have great high quality feels to them. If I were to make any complaints about the buttons on the Warthog stick, I'd say that it would be nice to have a more tactile click feel when they activate, and when fully extended to reach the upper red button, it can sometimes be a strain to hold the button down for longer periods. This might not be something that affects you in, say, flight sims where you're just pickling for a second or so, uh, but in things like space sims where you might use that to, say, make a long hold to launch a missile or something, uh, if you do that repeatedly, then it, it can wear on you. The throttle axes have some real heft to them. The axes themselves have a very smooth and fluid feel. The thumb hat on the face has a center click, and has a very large face to it, which fits your thumb well. The brake switch is a momentary switch when pulled back, and then it holds when pushed forward for proper operation. The next two switches down are on-off-on switches, with the bottom being momentary in both directions. Along the bottom closest to you are two two-way switches, a button that appears to be the same type of button on the stick, and a three-way switch. Forward from that, we have another button, and an axis lever that has a great fluidic feel to it and a center detent. Moving forward from there, we have a two-way switch followed by two three-way switches that are momentary when pressed forward. And finally, we have two two-way switches in the front. On the far left, we have a three-way flap switch with a flat cap on it. This little switch on the left throttle lever has the worst feel of any switch on the stick. It feels flimsy and doesn't have a good tactile feel when it's moved in comparison to the other switches. 
On the front, we have a big red button, the infamous slew nub, that is very inaccurate and difficult to use, but it does have a push button. And finally, we have the front hat switch. At the front, we have a tensioner for the main axis. You get past the detents by lifting the handles up. The detents can be activated or deactivated by removing this panel using this screw and this screw back here. So let's look at some gameplay with the Warthog. First, we're going to look at Star Wars Squadrons. My apologies in advance for the frame rate. For some reason, no matter what I adjusted, it was just a bit too low. Though this stick is designed for use with flight simulations, the stick works great in space sims too. Its linear but predictable axis movements feel just as good climbing through the clouds as they do dodging space debris and TIE fighters. There are plenty of buttons and switches for all the functions that you might need for Star Wars Squadrons and then some. All in all, good fun. But let's take a look at its accuracy. What better way to test its accuracy and sensitivity than with aerial refueling in DCS? This time I'm flying in VR, and I didn't bother changing my OBS settings, so the view is a little bit high. On the positive side, it actually looks better when we're connected. So, let's see how the Warthog does. I always seem to have to ask for pre-contact more than one time. This is mostly because I'm just bad, so forgive me. Nice small movements on approach, not trying to focus on the basket too much. Contact. And connected. You're taking fuel. Contact. Don't worry about that additional contact. I've noticed that it does that sometimes, even if you're firmly in the basket. I begin flying the spot and settle in to refuel. Nice small movements, constantly cycling throttle, just a tiny bit to stay in position. We're not going to fill the whole tank here, but that should be enough for you to see that the Warthog has very good accuracy and very good sensitivity. There might be a slight amount of movement in the center, it feels like there's no tension against it, but it's a really small area. And finally we've got some combat in Star Citizen. Note that I started the video not realizing that I had not repaired since the Xeno Threat event, and I'm missing the one cannon the whole battle. I also haven't run one of these claim jumpers missions in forever, and they've changed a few things since then. The small axis on the base is great for controlling the absolute speed limiter. The accuracy and smoothness of the Warthog's axis makes it easy to aim, keep my targets centered, and turn them into slag. If I were a better pilot, they might just go down even faster. 
So let's talk about pros and cons. For pros we have, number one, strength. With the exception of a couple of parts, the Warthog is a tough cookie. The grip is made of metal, the base is made of metal, the throttle could be used as a boat anchor. I'll talk about a couple of parts that are lacking a little bit later. Number two is quality of feel. It's been said before that if you put all of the top end grips on a table and had a regular person come and pick each one of them up and feel them, they would likely pick the Warthog as being the best, simply because of its feel. That may not hold completely true anymore. There are several other metal sticks available on the market now from companies like VKB and Winwing, but I can promise you it would be top three. Outside of that, the buttons and hats all feel great, and most of the switches have a great feel to them too. Number three is accuracy and sensitivity. The Warthog has really good sensors. They're high quality sensors, and they're both good in the stick and the throttle. All of the axes feel good, and the stick movements translate really well to movements in the sims. Number four is accessories. The Warthog is one of the most common higher end sticks on the market. Because of this, there's a lot of accessories available from third parties to make the Warthog better. There are scroll wheels and analog sticks for the throttle, and there are extensions for the stick, different springs, mounts, and more. Number five is authenticity. The Warthog is a good replica for the A10, and the throttles themselves have some similarities with F18s and F15s as well. The stick is an authentic replica of the F16, F22, and F35 sticks, as well as the A10. So if this is something that's important to you, the Warthog can definitely deliver. For cons we have one, it's a bit outdated. The Warthog was introduced in 2010, which of this recording is over 10 years old. The Warthog lacks many of the technological advancements that are currently available in high-end sticks, and the landscape of high-end sticks has changed somewhat since it was released. High-end sticks are now expected to have full metal gimbals. Some offer features like adjustable preloading or slip clutches on each axis, as well as replaceable cams and springs. Many of these features just aren't available in the Warthog. Number two are the few weak spots that it does have. There are a couple of weak points in the Warthog stick, most notably the neck of the stick itself, just above the connector. This piece is made of powdered metal or die cast metal and is known to have some weak points that can cause it to fail. In addition, you have a well-known stiction problem where the ball and socket of the gimbal develops wear that cause the gimbal to stick in portions of its travel. This problem can be avoided or mitigated with some maintenance and new lubricant. You can find guides online walking through the process to perform this. Finally, there's also an issue that can occur with the centering mechanism of the stick, allowing the gimbal to twist. This particular problem requires parts to repair. Number three is its lack of twist. Not everybody likes to use pedals. Most of Thrustmaster's competition offer a twist stick option even if it's done through an additional module. This is not something that's currently available on the Warthog. And finally, we have one that is both positive and negative, its price. When Warthog is on sale, I've seen it as low as $357. This is a pretty fair price for the Warthog right now, and if you can find it for this price, it's a heck of a bargain. But that is not this day. In the current climate, they're going for much more, and this higher price point you're nearing Verpal, VKB, and Winwing territory. In my opinion, any of these options are better than the Warthog at today's prices. You're going to get a lot more for your money. Yes, you'll have to save up a bit more to afford the VKB, Verpal, or Winwing solutions. And, you know, they might also be out of stock. But, you know, I would be happy to wait for restocking of Verpal, VKB, or Winwing before spending what people are spending on warthogs right now. So based on all this information, should you buy a warthog? Well, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, because I'm going to say no. At least not at MSRP or higher. This option is not because the warthog isn't a good stick, it really is. I do have really good reasoning for my opinion here, so hear me out. If you're looking to get a stick that is a replica of the F-18, buy Winwing. It's a closer replica to the F-18, and the gimbal is much better on that stick. 
If you absolutely want to have the F-16 or A-10 stick, you can buy other brands, and they either directly fit the Thrustmaster sticks, or they would have a module that you can put on them to allow a Thrustmaster stick to be mounted. If you're not looking for a specific replica, then the competition just plain offers better sticks and throttles, in my opinion. They all have features you would expect a stick to have in 2021, some of which are just not offered in the Warthog in stock form. I definitely understand that there are back orders and that products from Verpal or Winwing are more expensive, and VKB does not yet offer a throttle, something that will be resolved soon. I just think that with the pricing the way that it is today, it's very much worth saving a little bit more and getting something really worthwhile and more modern. As usual, I have some recommendations for Thrustmaster as well. Number one, split the Warthog line. Offer a plastic grip stick with your Warthog gimbal. Maybe even a slightly modified Warthog gimbal to minimize or eliminate some of the other problems that occur on it. You've had the production equipment for this hardware for 10 plus years. So this is a way to really get your money's worth out of this production line. Simplify the throttle and maybe use less metal in it and more plastic. But shoot for the $350 price point for the set. It is in my opinion that this price point will be a new battleground for HOTAS in the coming years. I know that VKB will have an offering landing right in that price point. Offer a higher end stick, landing at a similar price point to Verpal, VKB, and Winwing solutions. But redesign the gimbal, even if it's just going to full metal. Add some of the additional features that are available on the other sticks, such as adjustability and additional axes and functions. This will put Thrustmaster back into the upper tier of joystick tech with their competition while still offering an upper to mid-range setup. Overall, the Warthog is a great HOTAS. This particular setup has served me well for the past two years, and I have had no issues with it. And it was a great example for me why having good equipment truly does affect your flying capability. In my opinion, the Warthog's positives definitely outweigh its negatives. It has, however, become quite long in the tooth and I'm hoping that Thrustmaster plans to introduce its next generation of flight sticks soon. Remember that I'm giving away two Star Citizen starter ships with game packages when my channel hits 500 and 1,000 subscribers. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed and comment on my videos from the beginning of 2021 to when the drawing takes place. A random video will be selected, and then a random comment from that video will win the ship. I hope you've liked this video, I certainly have had a lot of fun making it. My next review is for the VKB Gladiator NXT. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to help my channel grow. The bigger the channel gets, the more access I'll have to new hardware to be able to test for you all. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I hope you have a great day.